language Lambda F is going to be a language where we're going to extend our regular Lambda calculus with the idea of defines. The, the idea of defines that you have in Racket. Our objective here is to un try to understand the difficulty of implementing defines with the same semantics, uh, in parentheses, the same beha the expected behavior of Racket. Um, so here's what we're going to do. We're first, I'm going to extend the language. So I'm going to introduce the, the syntax of this new language. Then I'm going to introduce in the following video, uh, the semantics. And finally, we're going to discuss a few exam examples uh, to motivate as to why the semantics that I'm going to show you is insufficient. So we're going to start with, um, with the syntax, right? The, the formal syntax the abstract syntax. So a term, we have to introduce this idea of terms, uh, and we have to extend values with void. Uh, and the reason we have to extend values with void is because if you recall, evaluating a define returns void, uh, which is the only value that is not printed on the screen in record. Um, and now we're going to introduce, we have define, uh, defines cannot be used in function calls. So we need to distinguish between expressions and things that may be defined. And as we've seen in our initial uh, module one, those are called terms. So terms cannot be used inside expression calls, only expressions. Uh, so a define takes a, a variable and a body. As you can see, there's no idea, no notion of, as you may remember, the, uh, in the abstract syntax, there are no uh, function definitions. You just have a basic definition. If you want to talk about a functional definition, then E would be a lambda, right? We also have this semicolon here. Uh, this is not an, a real semicolon. As you know, in Racket, there is no such thing. But this is just to say that you have two terms together, one followed by the other. And you can think of it as basically cons, right? But cons uh, syntactically, just to so that we can compose most multiple terms, because as you know, a program is a sequence of terms. So t1 and these two t's would be a sequence of two terms, right? Which is how we chain multiple terms together, so that we can define uh, the body of the lambda. Another difference that we will see here is that the the body of the lambda is a term, right? So in inside of the lambda, you can create defines, as you know. Right, and the and the top level program will be a term. Okay, so that's basically it. There are not many syntactically. This is the major difference. So if we want to define uh, RAST, the only novelty here is going to be void. And the way you create it is you just create a struct that has no fields, right? Because there's nothing here to. Void is, is atomic in the sense that it, it's not composed of anything. Um, now expressions, everything is more or less the same expressions. We didn't touch it. Here we know that a body of a lambda has to be a term. But notice that it's a single term. It's not a list of terms. And I'll get to, I'll re recap that in the next uh, slide when I talk about parsing. Uh, now, finally, we can define uh, terms. So a term is either an expression, a sequence, or a define. A sequence has a first and a second, right? First and second terms. Uh, and this is a single term. And define has a single body, and body is going to be an expression, not a term. Oops. Okay. I already said that sequence do not really exist. They're just to help you reason about the program. In this case, uh, implement uh, the evaluation of a program. Okay, now uh, we can talk about parsing. And I just want to show you a bit how because there's this f parse one, and then there's f parse, f parse one takes a single expression. Uh, and f parse takes a sequence of expressions, right, like a top level program. So when I see f parse, I give it a quote, and I give it an expression. So I give it a lambda, I can also give it a, a define and it will also parse it. But it just means that it's a single thing and it's not a list of things. Um, so if you see a lambda, notice uh, the things highlighted in yellow. So you have this function f parse one. Uh, 
specifically you won't call fparse one directly. You will be using the check parse check evaluates and whatnot, as we did in homework four because it's easier to use. Um, so what I want to focus on is how something is parsed so that everything is clear. There is one main difference with homework four, and that is that the body is now a single thing. It's not a list of things. So in homework four, the body is a list of things. So now what we have is, um, since here you see X, Y, and Z, so that's going to be a sequence, right? With X followed by a sequence, a sequence with Y and Z. So Y and Z, X, Y, and Z, they're all F, F variables, F variable, F variable. So you're not going to use this language F, but this is just to show you, this is just for the sake of this today's lecture. But the idea is the same for homework five, which I think is uh, the prefix is S. Okay. So the next thing I want to show you is that if you have a Lambda and a define, uh, it will show up as F sec of define. Here's the define. So I have to find single thing, single thing, right? And because there are two things, there's a define and there's an X. Uh, you see this, this, this set sequence here, the left hand side define, right hand side variable. Okay. Okay. Now we're using F parse and not F parse one. And in F parse, you can see that I give it a list of terms. So you get one term, another term, and another term. They're all in this list. So in this case, it says a list with a single define. What that's going to return is a term, right? In this case, because there's only one, you don't return a sequence. You just return the define itself. So here we have the define and then the variable. There's another thing to notice is that this define is a function definition and you can use the, the syntax of function definition and, and then it will be parsed as you would expect where F is bound to a Lambda. Do notice that the Lambda still has a list of parameters, which in this case is just one. And the body is going to be just the variable X. Okay. So in the next video, I'm going to cover the semantics.